Bonjour, bonsoir. How are you, dear friends? We are building the most inspiring and phenomenal communities of wine lovers. As we all know, wine is the catalyst of the greatest discussion. We'll be talking wine, but of course food, and everything that touches all our nation and senses. Bonjour, bonsoir, dear friends. Welcome to JCB Live. Tonight, on this phenomenal happy hour, I'm with a great friend, a very intimate friend who is one of the most amazing leaders in the wine world. I've been knowing him since I came to California. I've met him all around the world at multiple functions because he's been leading as a sommelier originally, a wine director today of a phenomenal winery named Fantesca, and a founder of so many great experiences. Today, he started as well Wine Unify, a great mission in the wine world that he will explain us. He ran this great winery that I love named Fantesca. We see each other at the airports, in bars, and many other cool places. He's going to share with you his passion. He's been on television. He's been a major judge in the wine world. He knows it all with a twist. And he is very sexy, very Charming, and he is here from his fabulous office in San Lino. Dylan, are you here, Dylan? Bonjour. I'm, hello, I'm hello, I am. With my red phone. I've, I got my red phone too. <laughs> hey, it feels like dust of strange love. So, Dylan, look at that. For you, as you love cosmic elements, we selected a very special wine to kick it off. Infinity. Yes. Oh. Woo! Voila. So what does it mean to be to you telluric, cosmic, and magnetic? I, I think, JCB, each and every one of us, you know, we have those wonderful types of energy or those virtues or those feelings in us. And, and I think if, if we would just sometimes slow down and take it easy, understand the energy around us, understand the people around us, listen to them, empathize with them and understand them. I think all of us can really uh, unlock each of those levels of energy and really just do some amazing things in the world, JCB. I totally agree. So how did you, we've known each other for many, many years and seen each other on many continents. Yes. How did you realize you, you had such energy? You know what, I think it's something, JCB, I learned and, and felt. Uh, you guys, I guess you feel it a bit more than you know it, if you will. I, I felt it at a very young age. I've always been around people. I've thankfully always been around people with fantastic energy and fantastic kinetic energy and, and people that were uplifting and had stories to tell and beautiful anecdotes and just, you know, just stories of positivity. And I would pull from each of them. I would listen. I would pay attention. I'd pull on coattails and ask questions. And, and for me, through that way of hospitality, hospitality, showing these kinetic energies for me is something that um, it seemed very, very natural. And, you know, for the past 20 years professionally and really 24, 25 years as an early teen, if you will, being able to be in hospitality, restaurants, retail, et cetera, it's that energy has grown, JCB. And I, I, also, I, often, often, I often intend to steal some of yours when I see you as well. Well, when we're together in the room, it's amazing. And this is why, you know, I wanted every one of our friends to meet you because I adore your style. And there's one question I've never asked you, in fact. How did you originally get into the wine world? Because you have such a natural for it. Were you born with a family loving wine or you just, it happened with you only? JCB, it, it really happened with me. You know, I grew up around incredible parents, mom and dad, but they, they didn't drink wine. I might've seen my mom drink one margarita, my entire kind of, you know, life up until the age of 17. I may have seen my father drink a Heineken. So it wasn't something that 
we grew up grew up with around the dinner table. Our summer trips were often to Los Angeles or sometimes San Diego or sometimes the Caribbean. So it wasn't going to to Paris or London or Florence or, or Dusseldorf, anything like that. But it was really when I was bussing tables at at a very early age, you know, 15, 16, 17, that, that I was around that, that energy of, of, of cosmetic people and magnetic people, people who had stories, people would, you know, order glasses of wine and order bottles of wine. And I would often clear tables and think to myself, I'll be in Tuscany one day, I'll be in Bordeaux one day, hell, I'll be in Napa one day. <laughs> and, and I just, I grabbed this energy as much as I could. I paid attention. And through hospitality, JCB, through the restaurants, that's yeah. really where I cut my teeth. And as you know, the, the, the hospitality world is so giving and it pulls you in in a very wonderful and positive way. And it pulled me and I listened and I, and I, I just wanted to shoot to the top. Shoot, well, shoot to the top. And, and not only you have, but I've noticed that in you, you're a great listener. So what are the great skills of a great listener? JCB, look, for me, I think being a, 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 a great listener, you need to first uh, be empathetic. You need to be empathetic and read the energy of the person across from you. Read the, the feeling and the emotion and listen to what the person, you know, back to listening. Listen to the person and be empathetic with the person in front of you that is telling you their story or showing their life or sharing a daily menu with you or sharing the wines by the glass with you. Listen to what they're saying, feel their emotion, feel their energy, feel their spirit, because you never know what that individual is going, to, going through today. And JCB, you and I walk into a restaurant, we sit down, we're in a hurry, we've gotta be either at the airport gates, or we've gotta be on a Zoom call or conference call, and we've only got 45 minutes to have a glass of wine. We could, you and I be very respectful and say, hi, yes, please, I love this, 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 can you drop the check as well? Nothing, ha no, no harm, no foul, nothing rude there. But right. I think if we took the extra seconds to listen to the server, listen to the bartender, read them, feel them, understand them, watch and listen to them give us, you know, when, 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 when we're serving individuals, uh, JCB, you do it, I do it, our teams, our staffs, colleagues, friends, we all are in hospitality, we serve people. I think if we were to take those extra few seconds and really understand what this server or tasting room manager, or, or whomever it may be is saying and telling us and giving us a piece of themselves while they talk about Raymond or while they talk about Buena Vista or while they talk about Fantesca, I think the world for all respective walks would be a lot better place. Yes, it's a great advice to all of us. Not only during those times, but those advice we need to capture, keep within themselves and ourselves and apply to the future. And I know you do, which makes it so much more fun to look at you, listen to you, and see you in full action. Talking about that, you've been awarded some of the most incredible things in the world of wine, some judging, even on television on a regular basis. Describe this wine and then tell me what you're the most proud of in terms of all your achievement in the wine world. Uh, well, you know, look, describing this wine, you know, Cremant de Bourgogne, it's, it's an incredible wine that's got this wonderful, you know, traditional style of, 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 of sparkling making, if you will, the may, way of making champagne. It's elegant and it's crisp. And for me, it's a very um, uplifting uh, sparkling wine. I enjoy the, I enjoy that fresh underripeness or tartness of the fruit, but at the same time, I enjoy the texture and the mousse and the complexity. And Love it. honestly, JCB, this is really how I try to start my, my day every day. We're human and it's impossible to do. <laughs> if, For breakfast? <laughs> if, if I can think about positive things that are fresh and keep me uplifted and give me a certain pizzazz about the day or the afternoon, you know, I, I, that, those are the things that really, really make me happy. And, and JCB, I like to say, you know, I don't necessarily have, I don't necessarily have passions, JCB. I have, I have desires. I have, I have, like anyone can have a passion. You can have a passion to do positive or negative. For me, I have a desire to tackle the day and tackle the week, tackle the month, tackle the quarter. I have a desire to make, you know, 
uh, other, other beautiful consumers, happy folks that may come through the winery, the cashier at Whole Foods, uh, the gentleman or the lady at FedEx or UPS. I have a desire to kind of have this freshness and this funness about me because I think it, it's contagious and it makes other, fe other people feel well. So at the end of the day, whether you're starting your day or your five o'clock or your, your Zoom tasting with, with sparkling or champagne or, or great wines of the world, I think if we can emulate the goodness that is in those bottles, the goodness that is from the place, from the terroir, from the region, I think we'd all feel much happier. My thoughts, JCB. I'm with you a million percent. Now, let's talk about your great achievement. Share with everyone, before we start to pour your wonderful Richard's Reserve, one of the major achievements you've done that has really transformed who you are, because I could list probably 15 of them, Pick one that you think characterized who you are and took you where you are now. You know what? I, I, it would have to be something very recent for me, JCB. Uh, it's something that I've always felt, but yeah. it's something that has recently launched and, and, and I think can, you know, effect change and, and, and do some major positive things for individuals in, in wine and food and beverage. And I don't, it's, it's not me taking credit. I haven't done anything amazing. I haven't done anything of any, of any, you know, acclaim. But I think Wine Unify, our wonderful nonprofit, our wonderful nonprofit that um, is, is really all about inclusion and diversity in, in the wine industry, diver, diversity in the beverage industry. I've got two amazing co-founders, so it's nothing I've done by myself. Other, other great minds that are really wanting to effect change and, and make your wonderful industry, my wonderful industry, our wonderful industry, a much more inviting and inclusive place. I think that would be Wine Unify. Well, wow. OEA Awards, you know, 15 years ago, a decade ago, magazines, those things don't matter. Because well, Wine and Spirit, number one, some in the United States in 2008 was pretty good one too. I'm fortunate for those things, but that's that's a personal thing that really only did something for me. Yes. If if I can't if I can't bring good energy, if I can't bring a good positivity and vibe to a colleague or to someone in a Zoom group or a tasting group or a study group or a board meeting, if we can't do something, if I can't do something to affect change, then what what good are any awards, JCB? There there no I, need. You just I, I, and they, they hang around. <laughs> well, it's always nice to have them and you got them. So talking about an amazing achievement, you obviously run this incredible winery that we all admire and we have wonderful wine in our cellars and at Oakville Grocery as well, because this is a wine we love to promote, not only for you, but as well because the wine is great. So why don't you tell us about this insane bottle that I can barely hold with one hand. Look at that. Oh, it's so big, so powerful, so intense. It looks like a Grand Cru from the 19th century in Burgundy. I love yes. it. Yes. Hey, JCB, we love to have a little bit of the spirit of Le Mousigny in there, if we could, if we could. <laughs> well, uh, the spirit is definitely there. I could feel it. <laughs> Well, you know so, what, JC. Tell us about this wine. This is very cool. Thank you, thank you. Look, it might not be the spirit of, of Le Mousigny, even though we always give a chapeau, uh, a, a, a tip of the hat, if you will, to the old world. But it is the spirit of some incredible five and four generation families in, in Sonoma, in the Russian River. Families you know very well. The, the Bacigalupi family, uh, of course, the Martinelli family. We're fortunate to have a couple of amazing vineyards that comprise to make the King Richards Reserve, a, a, a label that you know we just launched in the mid 2000s, shortly after our Estate Cabernet as well as our Chardonnay. But the King Richards Reserve really tells a story in the spirit of Fantesca, the spirit of the Commedia dell'arte, the spirit of, of this particular time, while at the same time it gives another chapeau to the patriarch of the Fantesca family, if you will, Richard Schultz. And uh, King Richard is a very, very beloved figure, still alive and with us today. And he's been amazing inspiration for Susan Hoff, amazing inspiration for Dwayne Hoff, the entire Hoff family, obviously, the team at Fantesca, all of us. And, you know, it's really a spirit of sharing incredible wine and 
gifting wine to friends, you know, allowing our amazing, well, we're fortunate that our amazing, you know, consumers love this wine and buy it from us every year. We're fortunate to sell out of it, but amazing wow. six, 650 case production Russian River Pinot Noir and again, great families. And what we really want to encapsulate JCB is the terroir of the Russian River Valley, yep. but still having that freshness that you might find in the old world that great fruit, a pinch of French oak, only about 30%, uh, beautiful and subtle and elegant oak that you're gonna find on the King Richards. But we really wanted to have the DNA of the Russian River. So you're gonna get that bright, that bright, bright cherry mm -hmm. and a bit of those cola notes and cocoa nib notes and rhubarb notes. I love it. And looking at your two fabulous chairs behind you, crew, I love it because they really represent Richard III, and it's probably one of his chairs that you've, I'm sure, tailor-made in the old world, and you had shipped over here in Santa Lina. And, and yes, next yes. time, we're going to have a glass of wine on each of those chairs and toast King Richard. <laughs> all over, JCB. And look, I will just throw this out. Uh, I know I've got a couple of your amazing wines. You've got more than a couple. But I've got a couple of your amazing wines in front of me and while the bottle is not in arm's reach, it is right there. I'm sure you can see your beautiful label behind I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, what gorgeous organic uh, Deloche Estate Pinot. Just FYI, just for me. Only for you. Thank you. And you know, where you were in the restaurant world, I believe you were serving the organic estate of, of the loach. And I, not only I thank you for that, but you're a man of great taste. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So we're gonna go back to obviously Wine Unify because it's a very important mission. And let's go back in a moment. But before that, who made you who you are today? Because you're an exceptional individual and I'm so excited for me. I gotta tell you, Dylan, being born in the wine world to see charismatic, energistic, and so phenomenal personalities coming to play in our world. It makes our world so much better, so much forward thinking. Where did you get all that energy? Is it your mother, your father, your grandparents? Is it when you went back to the Caribbean? I mean, tell us about this. JCB, uh, I think my determination and my sheer will came from my mother. Mom should get all of the credit, obviously. But oh, for sure. The person that I am, I, I, really, I really learned that and, and I guess became that and evolved into that from my father. You know, my father is someone who I watched, both still alive, fortunately, but I watched, I watched everything my father did. I watched everything he said. I watched how he spoke with people. I watched how my father would learn languages in his business not speaking fluently, but he would learn language enough so he, that he could make a Cantonese family feel comfortable, a wow. Vietnamese family feel comfortable, a Japanese family feel comfortable. He would learn things about people, again, to empathize with them and speak with them and talk with them. And, and I learned a lot of that worldliness from my dad. And I think it's... Um, I think it served me very well, JCB, in such that it's allowed me to, again, understand people and language and cultures and what they're used to and what they might not be used to, what makes them tick and what doesn't, what makes them comfortable and not. And again, JCB, I think it all, all leads back to hospitality. How you make someone feel, how you interact, that person will continue to come and see you and support you and call you and email you and vice versa. And that just grows the entire world, JCB. And I feel that with you so well, and you've characterized it so beautifully from your mom to your dad. Wine, it seems as well, play an amazing role for you to bring people together in conversation. Tell us how you use wine and all the years I've known you, you use it as your catalyst to I create do. a discussion and, and to love other people. Well, look, wine is all about family. It's all about generations. It's all about history. It's all about love. But I think at the end of the day, we speak a lot, a lot of things about history here in the United States, but the old world, this 
familial history of, of wine and language and people and growing and evolution and this, this passing down or handing down of knowledge and education, you know, that's always been something that's been paramount for me. And I've always been keen and wanting more and understanding. So I could literally be around anyone, anywhere at any given time and within 10 seconds, bring the conversation to wine. I'm not sure why, I'm not sure how, maybe most of the people that, that, that I come in contact with, you know, obviously have had a glass of wine or wanted a great bottle or wanted a great glass while they were out or at a dinner table or at a bar waiting on a friend. And I always find a way to bring wine into the conversation because then it talks about happiness and family and, and generations and, there is this warmth about it. And I end up having an hour long conversation with individuals that I may have been getting coffee next to in an airport, you know? Well, coffee and you, true connector, talking about airports. <laughs> the last time we physically saw each other, we were landing together. And in the departing terminal, two people came to me and said, oh, you just said hello to Dylan Proctor. Do you know him? And I was so excited because you knew everyone there. And you are a true connector. And it makes me so joyful to see as well this approach of Napa Valley so accessible. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because there's a very cool aura about you. And that's why I love to do wine tastings with you or events and know that you're around because you make it uh, that reachable, phenomenal wine that is Napa Valley. Not that austere, sometimes ooh, a little snob approach you make it extremely fashionable and trendy and everything else tell us about that and how you see napa valley in the future as i'm serving of course all great things a, a, a big gun that you're going to tell us about as well 2012 duty yeah look jcb it's it's, it's i love that you asked that question um look for me you know, I remember the days of having to try my best to fit into what I thought the wine world was supposed to be, or try my best to fit in what I felt people expected from a wine person, a professional wine person, a professional sommelier, a professional or corporate, you know, beverage individual. Yes. And I never could necessarily fit into that, into that status quo into that mold, if you will. Yep. And I was often told you're too flashy, you're too flamboyant, you're too colorful, you say too much, you use your hands too much. I was often told those things. And I finally, I've got to be honest, JCB, I finally accepted that, but this is who I am. And right. the knowledge that I am not trying to give, but the knowledge, and it was often individuals asking me questions or I don't want to dare say quizzing me, but, but quizzing me or seeing if I was actually supposed to be there. And then when I went into greater detail about family and site and soil and place and, and specifics that only an individual would know, had they been there and known it very well, that's when I finally said, well, look, as long as I know and understand my subject, my topic, my that's vocation, right. as long as I understand my vocation, I can be exactly who I was meant to be and who I always was, which is me. And hopefully what that is or what that is doing <laughs> or what that will do is allow individuals to see Napa as a bright and fun and colorful uh, uh, place, uh, uh, an inclusive place with diverse marketing and diverse advertising and diverse individuals talking about everyday wonderful $20 wine and amazing, I know we don't use the term cult wine anymore, but amazing 100 case produced $1,000 bottles of cult Napa Cabernet from A to Z, every round. Like this one. Yeah, like that one, like that one. And I love it, and I, I will, not to interrupt you, because I am, I always remember I saw you, I think it was in Hong Kong, the f one of the first few times, and you were very charismatic. You were working actually for Behringer and you were presenting probably one of the greatest estate out of Australia. I believe it was Grange. <laughs> and yes, you were yes. there, 
and you were fabulous. And I said, I want to get to know this guy because he's in the corporate world, but still being himself. Now, this is what I admired with you. You never, ever gave up on being yourself. So on that note, what advice do you have for everybody listening who somehow, and I think you're the prime example. You've done movies, television, you're the judge. Of, of many wines. You were on the covers of magazine. You run a phenomenal winery. Give an advice to people to allow themselves to be themselves. JCB, I, I thank you. Jesus, holy smokes, thank you. Seriously, thank That's you. That's true. <laughs> no. I only I, said the facts. <laughs> JCB, I think, I think the greatest advice and, you know, I. I have an opinion, that's all I have. I hope that I can show more than I can speak or say. But this is my opinion. I think again, if you, if you listen, JCB, if you pay attention, if you, if you have empathy, and you remember as much as you can about that initial or those first few conversations, things that the other individual was saying to you or telling you, things that, uh, the, that these individual was presenting and you pull them over after the end of a seminar or a symposium or a panel and you just said a few words and asked a few questions and made that individual go, wow, they really were paying attention and they listen, they remember. They care about what I am doing. They care about my day to day, what I'm presenting, what I'm teaching and talking about. I think if we all paid attention to that, I think that graciousness and that kindness and how we approach our day to day, how we approach Zooms and conference calls and, and 100 degree heat on our outside tasting room decks. I think if we applied that everywhere, you know, we're in this hospitality industry to make others feel happy and included and appreciated. And yeah. we want to love on them so that they come back and enjoy us. And we want to give that same love to them. So my advice is, do those things, pay attention, surround yourself with goodness so that you can exude goodness. The end of my personal email signature, JCB, is simply be nice. That's what we should be. That's right. And that's all we need as a sentence because it says it all. Yeah. I love it. So a few words on duty before my next big questions. Of course. Because yeah, we sure. have two. We have the duty on one end, I'm doing bodybuilding right now. You see, this is why I, I love your wine. So this is why I'm so powerful. The bottles are just themselves about a few pounds each. Yes. And we have the justice, duty, justice. So as I'm serving justice, maybe tell us about both before I go right in to my favorite question of the night. Absolutely, JCB. So a lot like this beautiful wine that you have so graciously created, uh, being sourced from Howl Mountain, the All Great Things collection of wines, we'll see Howl Mountain and Cabernet Sauvignon as a backbone. The 2012, especially for this vintage in Howl Mountain, on Howl Mountain, is a much more aromatic and, and fresh and bright black fruited vintage, if you will, the 12 duty. But at the same time, it's got it's got the power and it's got yep. the it's it's got the it's got the sure power of cabernet that you expect coming from Howl mountain you know it's got a beautiful a beautiful sapage of cabernet sauvignon cabernet franc and petit verdot it's got a beautiful elevage of about 19 maybe 20 months for this vintage the 2012 it shows there's a lot later as you can see on the palette it's showing exceptionally well and now the 2016 that you have just poured and you still should be savoring in your mouth, it's, it's a more powerful vintage. It's got a bit more, you know, fruit attack on the front palate, but it's still elegant. There's still a beautiful amount of acid in this wine. I, I think the, the, the Merlot and the Cabernet Franc and the Petit Verdot give it such a lift, but it allows the backbone of Cabernet to be exactly what it is with that black gold fruit. And both of those vintages make me happy because they're aromatic, but the 16 really shows its sheer power and elegance. In love with them both. And I love the association of the grapes, the marriage of Petit Verdot, Cabernet Franc, as you said, makes it magic. And I think those are so phenomenal in Bordeaux. 
I'm so delighted that you are really daring to put them forward here because I think the expression of Cap Franc in Napa Valley is probably one of the best terroir on the planet. I agree. I agree. Love that you said that. So now a very dear mission to you. Probably the most important, as you kindly said, of all what you've done. A uh, mission that I'm in love with, and this is why I really wanted you to address the world tonight and tell everyone about it. So tell everybody about Wine Unify and how can people participate and obviously why you did it and where you think the world is. Yeah, thanks, JCB. Look, we, my, we're really fortunate to have, have founded and put together Wine Unify over the last several months, you know, you know, we're in September now. Wow, but we officially launched on July 1st, uh, initially for the United States, uh, hopefully very soon, thank you for the Americas. And at yep. some point within the next three, maybe five years, but hopefully sooner, you know, a, a larger, more global uh, initiative that's got a lot of bandwidth. So sure. we're very fortunate right now for the individuals who have wanted to donate, donate time, donate, uh, donate money, donate finances, because, you know, what we really hope to do with this, 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 this set of awards that we have just kicked off, as a matter of fact, the applications did close yesterday, September 7th. But what, uh, what we wanted to do was allow individuals that have had a dream or a desire, or in many people's eyes, a passion. Everybody doesn't uh, define passion the way I do, but a desire to get ahead, a passion to get ahead, uh, a willingness and a need to getting, uh, getting ahead and learning about beverage and wine and hospitality and, and business and how to be a great writer, how to be a great uh, fitner. You know, at a young age, we all have these dreams and aspirations. Absolutely. So hopefully with a year long subscription to jancisrobinson.com, you know, six to 12 glasses, depending on the award level, six bottles to a full nine liter bottle, a nine liter case of wine, 12 bottles, of course, and a Corvin for individuals to be able to study and taste and take notes. And at the same time, supply them with the finance to take their WSCT level one certification. That's great. And throughout the world of wine, it's not about a particular thing because each of these individuals may want to Again, say, look, I want to work on the winery side. I want to work on the operations side. I want to work on packaging. You know, everyone doesn't have to be a national sales manager or a VP of marketing or an ambassador. That's right. Maybe you just want to work with corks, JCB, or labeling or, or packaging. So we want this to be for everyone that wants a foot, a place, and an opportunity, JCB, in the world of beverage. Simple as that. I, I love it. So how do you market it to be inclusive to any religion, any skin color, any nationality, and any continents? Well, right now, just the United States. Yeah, but, that's a big deal. Yes, yes, yes. But to be continent. <laughs> <laughs> it's a massive continent. You're absolutely right. But, but really for us, black, indigenous, all people of color. Yes. Apply, click on our website, wineunify.org. Uh, donate if you feel, uh, uh, if, if, if you know, I won't implore you, if you feel it upon yourself to donate and give because an individual or an entity or a group may believe in this cause of inclusion and uplifting and, and elevation. And, and yes, please donate. But we really want people of color and indigenous individuals here in the United States and, and, and black men and black women to, sure. to, 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 to see another side of life, see another and, side of the world, see another side of history, see what the old world has been doing for the last 500, 2000, 4000 and 6000 years. This beautiful thing that we call wine, you know? And I'm so grateful of, of this because you know, specifically black men and women, as you said, we interact a ton with them, a lot on spirits, a lot on other alcoholic beverage, but wine is not as much an interest uh, as much or as open to them. Whichever way we look at it, besides our phenomenal partners in Africa, and for me, a Frenchman, we have obviously a ton 
of you know African French involved in the wine world, but that's really more in France only. Not enough in Europe at large and not enough in the US. So I think what you're doing is making them feel comfortable to come in and providing a platform. Look, I, I, I don't have any of your, your, your French wine except for the Cremont de Bergogne in front of me, but when you think about the, when you think about the fancy labels and Burgundy and Bordeaux, yeah. and, and of course I've got some, Delo I've got all these wines behind me. Wine of California, wine of, specifically of Napa, wine of Burgundy and the Loire and Bordeaux have always been held at this esteem, you know. Unfortunately, black Americans, uh, men and women only make up about 13% of the American population. So the things that we aspire to be as, as, as young kids are, are a few things that I could name off. Don't need to do that. But if wine were to make itself less billionaire-ish and more inclusive, we would actually say, wow, I, I have a place in Napa. I should order that wine. I should go on that website. I should click on this, whether it's 25 or whether it's 250. If there were the exposure through marketing and advertising, more of us would see it and say, I will choose whichever experience I want, whether it's the $25 experience, the $150 experience, or the, you know, 100 cases made, nine year waiting list, $800 a bottle experience. But at least let me know that it's there. That's that right. I can have access. And I think that's really the key. And, and I really commend you. As you mentioned, this is one of the most important mission you've done. This is your passion, right? Indeed. And, you know, this is ours as well. And I need to tell you, we just released, you know, something that I personally drew. As you could see, this is our passion glass. Yes. because we all share passion. It's called the passion collection we designed with Baccarat. And you have, I think, very important words that I believe, as you know, has always been my mantra since I'm born. <laughs> Unity, diversity, equality, love, peace, passion, and let it be to be for you what you want it to be. Yes. Don't you think that that should be all what we do in many ways? JCB, I wish every facet of life was like this. I wish every conversation, every coffee purchased, every meal eaten, every carriage ride at Central Park South in New York. I wish everything we did yes. were this. I wish the virtues of the all great things in front of you and the virtues of this, this wine unity, I wish they were all this because I think the wine world, the beverage world, the spirits world, the, the, the mortgage world, the banking world, everything would be, the political world would be a much better, a much better place. I really do. I, I believe as we doing it together here with this wine, yourself with the phenomenal wine unified mission that we're going to obviously help over time. We are, you know, starting in energy, as you said at the beginning of this great moment together, we're going to start the rhythm. And I think as soon as we build rhythm, we're going to see more people daring to come in and not being shy to come in this world and spending time. Can you believe, can you believe that we have an ambassador program? And for many, many years, we delighted to tell you that we have many African-American, probably a hundred. We have many Indian people, Chinese people, and people of color at large who thought, what on earth? I never thought I would get into the world of wine, but they made it so easy and welcoming. And I'm so excited of what you're doing because welcoming people, making them feel comfortable, making them feel welcome, and part of the circle is the key. JCB, thank you. But it goes without saying, you and your family have been doing this for quite some time. Maybe quite some time. <laughs> Maybe way too long sometimes. <laughs> You've been doing it a long time, JCB. A lot of folks that don't know that should know that. So tell us, what is your dream? You've achieved so much, and you're a very young man. 
I want to stress that. You look very young, but you are very young. Uh, you've done so much in the last 21, 24 years you've described. What is your dream now? Yeah, JCB, look, I think, uh, you know, I'm fortunate to now put, I guess it would be uh, four X's by my name, if you will, yeah. by, by my age, by myself, by my name. Uh, I think what's next for me, JCB, while I continue to hopefully do all of these great things that I'm currently doing, I hope people see them as great. I'm not trying to be great. But my next thing, JCB, would, would be to maybe own a tiny piece of dirt here in the Napa Valley, as well as a tiny piece of dirt in, in Piemonte, in La Mora. That's what I I'm know. <laughs> right in the Piemonte, in the heart of it, in the best area. Too. Now, this, this would be a little more personal and maybe, hopefully it would benefit others in each area by, by way of employment and, 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 you know, uplifting things to do, of course, boosting an economy. But this is a little personal thing for me. Just a small piece of dirt here in the Napa Valley and, of course, a, a tiny piece of dirt in Barolo. And uh, that would make me very happy. I would think to myself that hopefully what I've done these 40 plus years have allowed me to graciously and thankfully and fortunately be here to have these two little tiny things and that would make me happy. Well, that will happen. I could tell you, I feel it, I sense it. And in life, when you want something, typically it happens. Remember my story with Buena Vista, I was 11 years old. That was the dream. So any dream comes true. I believe if, if we really strongly believe in it. So Dylan, we've tried Burgundy Bubbles. We've tried your amazing Fantesca wines that obviously special offerings, not only on your website, as well at the Oakville Wine Merchant. We have our Unity label that will give back all the wines being made, 100% is being given back to a variety of causes, including yours. So we're delighted about this. This is all for philanthropy and causes, we believe, which are written right here. And I think you said it so well. Now, a few seconds left, or minutes, because you, you speak like a pastor, so I'm going to listen peacefully and receive. Tell anyone a message that you wish to send to the world at large, because you're such an inspiration, and I really thank you for being who you are. Thank you, JCB. Really appreciate it. Look, my, my final parting words, or I won't dare say quote, because I haven't even thought of this, so it's not a quote. I guess it will be a quote after it's said, but my final parting words are, are listen, pay attention, understand, empathize, and remember. I think if you can do each and every one of those things, it will change the way you formulate your own personal calendar, your work calendar, your schedule, your thoughts, your actions, your deeds, when you're driving, when you're shopping, when you're when you're buying a pack of gum at the gas station, I think if you think about all of those things, you affect people that you come across. So affect them in such a positive way by doing those simple things and living those simple things. <clears throat> Pardon me, goodness will just hopefully spread. So I tried to do that. Well, Dylan Proctor, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, a true example, an iconic, passionate young man in the wine world and a man who runs Fantesca Winery, of course, but more importantly, I shouldn't say more, but I think right now I want to stress more because it's so exciting what you're doing with your other co-founders is Wine Unify. We are so pleased that you are here in the Napa Valley and I would like to add in the world of wine because, you know, we are Franco-American, you love Italy as well and Piemonte, so you belong to the wine world. I really want to thank you for being with us, Dylan, so much tonight and for sharing all your passion, all your wisdom, all your talents and really showing to everybody that even though your parents did not drink wine, you can learn how to drink wine. Even though your parents were not in hospitality, you could be the leader in it and finally, you are really influencing the, word, the world by bringing so many great people in 
of different backgrounds, different origin, different cultures, and obviously different skin colors. So congratulations for all what you do. You're a true leader. We love you. Love you, JCB. And when, when do we have a date to go in those two chairs and have a glass of wine together? Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, JCB. We'll bring a few hundred people because I'm sure we won't need to wear a mask by then. No, we won't. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Great to be together. JCB. Ashante, Monsieur. Ashante. Ashante and great harvest. Cheers. Thanks.